Welcome back to Intro to Procreate. This is the beginning of part two. If you missed part one, I will include a link in the description below for you to look at that before you look at this one. But if you've already reviewed part one, welcome back and here we go. Okay, next up is the layers option up at the top. So what this does is it shows you the layers that are in the art, the piece of art that you're working on, the project that you're working on. If you've worked in a design program that supports layers before, these will be very similar to what you're already familiar with. You have the ability to layer as needed. You have the ability to merge layers. You have the ability to turn layers on and off. So what we're going to do for this one is I'm going to turn that layer off. I'm going to activate this blank layer up here just so I can move into showing you the color palette and the next couple of options on the left-hand side. But while we're in layers, while we're here, if you swipe to the left on any layer, you have a couple options. You can lock the layer, which means it will stop you from editing that layer. This can help if you want to prevent accidentally writing on a layer that you've already finished so that you don't mess your artwork up. Duplicating a layer will copy the layer that you're working on into an exact replica so that you can hide the original and make sure that you don't lose any of the characteristics of that layer itself. And delete will delete the layer, obviously. If you have your layer locked, you will not be able to delete it. You will have to unlock the layer to delete it. And in layers, again, if you tap on your thumbnail, you'll see a whole bunch of other options. You could rename your layer. You can select the full layer, make a copy. Fill layer just means you're going to fill that layer with a color. Clear is the same as delete. You're basically wiping your screen. Um, alpha lock, I haven't used that. Masks, you really won't need if you're doing for vectorizing, if you're using this for vectorizing. Merge down and combine down, you will use to merge down or combine down for your layer. So if you have two layers back to back that you want to then say, oh, hey, I want to make layer nine and tools and layers one layer, I would do merge down. And what it would do is it would drop layer nine down into that tools and layer into one. So I also want to hop back for the clear for one second, just so I remember to show you this. When you are on your artboard, if you create something, so let's go back to creating hello for a minute. Okay, so while you have this, if you want to get rid of this screen entirely, the default option to clear this is to scrub your screen with three fingers. So if I just scrub my screen with three fingers, obviously you can't see that I'm doing that right now, but that's what I just did to make it go away. And I'll teach you another trick while we're here. If you tap your screen with two fingers, it will undo what you just did. And if you tap your screen with three fingers, it will redo what you just did. So you can undo and redo and undo and redo. There are buttons for these that I will show you, but the finger swipes and the tap touches and all the little shortcuts, they will be your favorites when you are working in the middle of a piece and you won't want to go find a where's back and how to redo. You can just tap your screen. Two more things that I want to show you about the layers panel before I forget are... The opacity control inside the layers panel that I use a lot for tracing my own designs. So you can go into the layers panel and click on this little N on your layer and it can drop the opacity of what you're doing. So I'll use this when I am hand lettering most of times because I will like the shape of one layer letter and I won't like the shape of another letter. So I don't want to lose my original design, but I do want to have it in the background as I'm working. So what I do is I drop the opacity on this layer I'll keep it visible and then I'll create a second layer to work on. And that way when I'm drawing on this layer, I can trace over how my original design looked, but I won't lose it and I won't be writing over it so it won't interfere when I'm doing an image trace. And another thing when you're in layers is the grouping. You can drag, you can hover down on a thumbnail and drag to reorder them. You can also hover over two layers, see how it turns blue there, to group them together. And it'll create one group and inside of another, see how there's this new group under tutorial labels. So you can nest groups inside groups and merge groups as needed. If you don't want a group inside another group, you can always drag it out so it's at a higher level. So those are two things that you can use very frequently to help build your projects in layers and then merge down as needed. Moving on to the color palette at your top right, 
When I letter or hand draw, the only color that I ever use is true black. But if you wanted to change your colors, this is where you would do it. So you could go into the disc and pick your color from there. You can go into classic. If you don't have any color wheels down here, it's because you just haven't had any yet or there aren't any defaults set. So you can also set these yourself when you're in palettes. And you can set these yourself when you're in classic by picking your color anywhere you want up here and just tapping in one of your open squares. So if you're picking, let's say red and you want this red you're going to match the color in your top right when you tap down here it's going to add that there if for some reason that you added a color that you don't want in your palette you can just press down on this and release hit delete and it will get rid of that color for you moving out of colors and back into the work area on your left hand side you'll see two sliders a dot in the middle and then two arrows down at the bottom underneath of those your top slider is your brush size that will show you exactly how thin or thick your brush weight will be and just to kind of give you a feel for the difference if you put it really heavy here you have a heavy downstroke and a very thin upstroke and the smaller that you make it obviously you're going to see a less of a contrast on there so it's just a matter of your personal preference on which brush you want to use and what weight you want to use. You can move those around as needed. Just make sure that you make a note for your brushes in your projects of what weight you are using because going back and trying to match it is a lot easier if you know what per percentage you were set at. Moving on to the little dot underneath of the brush weight slider, that is your eyedropper tool. I don't use this much, but if you were working with a specific color and you had something on your artboard that you wanted to pick up, Let's make this purple. Okay, so we have purple there. If I wanted to pick this up, you can hold down on that eyedropper. You can't see what I'm doing, but I'm holding down on that little dot between the sliders and I'm grabbing this purple color. So you can also grab black to pick that up. You can go back to grabbing purple and that's as easy as it needs to be. <laughs> so the eyedropper tool works just like any other eyedropper tool in your design program and it picks up the color that you tap once you're holding it so that you can use that in your color palette moving forward. The slider that is underneath of your eyedropper tool is your brush opacity. This is another one that I don't use often but just in case you want to know how it works, let's bump the weight up on here. Now you see my brush weight here. So if we drop the opacity on this a little bit, like I said, there's a preview as there is with the brush weight. It will just reduce the opacity of that brush that you're using. I only work in true black, so this isn't something that I use, but if it's something that would help you in your projects, that is how the opacity works. Underneath of the opacity, you will see two arrows. Those are your undo and redo buttons. Again, undo is two taps on this two finger tap on the screen and your redo is a three finger tap on the screen so if you draw something that you don't want on your screen two taps will get rid of it if you accidentally undid something that you didn't want to undo three taps will bring it back and last but not least now that we're rounding out the end of this tutorial i want to show you quickly how the quick art works and i want to show you a little trick on filling shapes with colors or filling in open shapes to solid shapes just in case you ever need that in your hand drawing. So let's get rid of a lot of these lines on here just to clean up the artboard. I brought my opacity back up to the norm and I'm gonna put my brush size down to where I usually use it. And let's go over here and change it back to true black. So with quick art, when you're drawing lines and closed paths, if you hover over the last point that you touched, it will round that shape out for you and then you can adjust accordingly. So you can do this with a circle, you can do this with triangles, you can do this with a rectangle or a square. As long as it's a closed path and you haven't lifted your brush during drawing it, it will know and it will complete that for you. If it's not something that it, you wanted it to do, you can undo and it will go back to the shape that you drew before it did the automatic adjustments for you. And then the fill-in shape, which is fun, even though I don't often use it, is you can take your color wheel up here, hover over that color, and drag and drop it into a shape. So you can fill that in with black, you can fill it in with whatever color you're using of the day, but that is an easy way to fill in your shapes. And that rounds out my first tutorial. I hope you like the information that I provided. If you like my tutorial, feel free to subscribe to my channel so you get notifications for tutorials moving forward, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good one.